Church. It's Thursday. Take your Bibles and let's go to John in chapter number 16. We're right in the middle of a discussion on the Holy Spirit and the work that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the third part of the Trinity. He is actively at work in our salvation. And here are several things that he does. It's going to take us several uh, sessions to, to go through this. So you may want to read these passages. If you have time, grab a pen or a pencil, piece of paper, and write down these texts. And then read these texts over the next several days. And they won't take you long to read them, but they are uh, about five major places in the Bible where it describes the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now here they are. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27. John 14, verses 15 through 27. Then the text we're going to be looking at, John 16, verses 5 through 15, is also about the work of the Holy Spirit. Then, of course, Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2, that is about the coming of the Holy Spirit in dwelling the hearts of the believers. And then Romans chapter number 8, Romans chapter number 8, verse 9 through 28 is all about the work and the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. And then there's a major passage in 1 Corinthians in chapter number 12, 13, and 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. All those are major passages about the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to be able to, to look at all those. It would take us uh, way too long to do that. But let me just give you a couple of things that the Holy Spirit does. Look at chapter number uh, 16. The first thing he does is he convicts sinners. In chapter number 16, beginning in verse number 8, he says this, And when he has come, talking about the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world, that is the lost people, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. And so the Holy Spirit, one of the works he does and one of the great works he does, and you can't be saved without it, is he convicts us of our sin, tells us what in our heart sin is. He convicts us of that sin, makes us feel guilty. We have a conscience in us. He stirs that conscience up. Even though we're dead in our sins, he makes us aware of our sins so that we might turn to him about what righteousness is, what is right, how one can be made right with God, convinces us that the gospel is truth. Then, of course, of the judgment which is to come. Because you see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we begin to recognize we're going to be judged by God and cast into a devil's hell, that is what, that is what motivates us to leave our sin and our selfishness and to embrace Jesus as our Lord. So the first thing he does is he convicts sinners of their sin. Secondly, he converts the submissive. That is, he converts those who will repent and turn to Jesus. When we turn to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit converts us. Now, to get this passage, you'll have to go to Romans in chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. And in Romans chapter number 8, in verse number 9, it says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So you know who's the saved individual is the one who has the Holy Spirit. Those who don't have the Spirit, they don't belong to Christ. So that is what divides us. I have Jesus living in me. The Holy Spirit has uh, it came into my life and has caused me to be born again. And therefore, he has converted me from a sinner into a saint. And so he's taken me from death into life. He goes ahead and says in that text, verse 10, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of the sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
And he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So what Jesus did when he gave me the Holy Spirit, when he sent the Holy Spirit into the world, and when I repented of sin and, and submitted myself unto him as my Lord and my Savior, is he gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came into me, he converted me from a sinner to a saint, from a dead person to one who has everlasting life. Also, uh, staying in Romans chapter number 15, go to chapter 15, not only does he convict us of sin, righteous the judgment come, and not only does he convert those who are submissive, he consecrates the saints. In chapter number 15 of the book of Romans, he again is talking about the work that God does in, in us in salvation. So in chapter number 15, verse number 16, he says this, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, now notice this word, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We are sanctified by the Holy Spirit, set apart. Now, what makes me different from the rest of the people of the world is I've been set apart because I've got God's Holy Spirit. What makes you different from everybody else in the world and uh, those who are lost, that is, is that you have God's sealing in your life. He consecrates us in three different ways. Number one, He indwells us, and that sanctifies us. That makes us separate from the world. Number two, He seals us, and that is, He makes a pledge that He'll never leave us, and therefore He indwells us. He doesn't just come and save us. He stays inside of us. And then number three, He baptizes you into the body of Christ. I don't have time to look at those verses but that will be in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 13, where he baptizes you into the body of Christ. One other thing he does that we're going to talk about in this session, and we'll hit four more in the next session, and that is he comforts us. Uh, go back to John again in John chapter number 14 this time. You'll also find this in Romans chapter number 8. He uh, speaks a lot about the Holy Spirit being the comforter. In fact, that's one of the names that has been given to the Holy Spirit because that is His work. He comforts us. You know how it is that when you've lost a loved one or something has gone awry in your life and it seems like life is falling apart, how do you get through that? It's the comforting power of the Holy Spirit. So not only does He convict sinners, He converts the submissive, He consecrates the saints, He comforts the sad. Now look with me at verse number... Uh, 16 and 17. Chapter number 14, verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that is a comforter, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells in you and will be with you. And I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And you continue on through that passage. He again, again refers to him as the helper, the paraclete, the one who comes along beside and comforts us and gives us strength. So those are the work of the Holy Spirit. He's at work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So let the Holy Spirit do his work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you do have, have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit and you do have control over our lives because we live the Spirit-controlled life. And we pray, Father, that you will guide us and direct us today, that we might live in a way that would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen.